Good morning. Don't adjust your 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 screen, your camera. I'm in a dark place right now. And this morning, that's what I want to deal with. Sometimes you can be in a place that is already dark and then it just gets darker. And you didn't think you could be in it darker. Sometimes maybe when it gets darker and you didn't think it could get any worse, it ends up even worse than that. Well, I want to give you some hope this morning. I want to let you know that at our very darkest, which you may not be thinking about it like this, but living in a state of sin, it cannot get any darker than that. But at that very darkest state in life, there still is hope. Stay tuned. our hearts for the word of God. Amen. I want to invite you to join me in the book of Jeremiah All right. chapter number 32. 32. We're going to pick up uh, the other end of our sermon from a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago we looked at an Ethiopian who pulled Jeremiah out of the pit. Right. And this is the other end of that. Okay. Amen. Amen. After he gets out of the pit he's still in prison. Jeremiah chapter number 32. And I want to pick up at verse 6 and read a few verses for you hear it. And as you turn, I'm going to offer a word of prayer. Most holy and righteous God, my heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to speak your word of life. Because it is your word of life, Father, I take it seriously, Lord God, and I don't want to get up and speak my opinion. So I ask that you, Father, would take anything from me that doesn't belong in this message, that you will supply me with only what you would have to be said. Pray that you will speak to me and speak through me. I need your word. We need your word. Lord, I'm at your mercy. I'm at your will. Yeah. I'm willing and I'm ready. Yeah. Let the words of my mouth, yeah. meditation of my heart, yeah. be acceptable in your sight. Yeah. Oh Lord, my strength and my yeah. almighty redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Jeremiah chapter 6, uh, chapter 32, excuse yeah. me. Verse number 6, if you there, say amen. Yeah. If you need me to wait, just holler wait. Amen. Uh, Jeremiah 32, verse 6. And it reads, and Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Hanamiel, the son of Shalom, thine uncle, shall come unto thee, saying, Buy thee my field that is in Anathoth, for the right of redemption is thine to buy it. So Hanamiel, my uncle son, my first cousin, came to me in the court of the prison, according to the word of the Lord, and said unto me, by my field, I pray thee, that is in Anathoth, which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is thine, and the right of redemption is thine. Buy it for thyself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. I love them words. And I bought the field of Hanamiel, my uncle's son that was in Anathoth, and weighed him the money, right. even 17 shekels of silver. Right. And I subscribed the evidence and sealed it and took witness and weighed him the money in the balances. So I took the evidence of the purchase, 
Ooh. Both that which was sealed according to the law and custom and that which was open. All right. And I gave the evidence of the purchase unto Baruch, the son of Neriah, the son of Masiah, in the sight of Hanamiel, my uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. The prison, and I charged Baruch before them, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these evidences, this evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed, and this evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel, that they may continue many days. Last verse, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Houses and fields, praise God, and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. Thank you for honoring the word of God this morning. My Lord. We're still in a series on the message of hope. Last week we gave a definition for hope for the Christian. Because for the world, hope is something that you wish for. All right. Hope is something that you like to have. Yeah. But that kind of hope will never give you what you wish for just because you wish it would happen. All right. I told you I wish a million dollars would drop in my bank account right now. <laughs> but that don't mean it's going to happen. <laughs> Amen. That kind of hope will not give you a guarantee, but for the Christian, for the believer, hope is your contract. And your contract is the word of God. And whatever God says in the contract, God said it himself, it will be performed. He said not one jot, not one tittle. If I can put that in American terms, not the dot on the top of the I or the, the cross on the T. Uh, or the period at the end of the sentence will fail to do its job because whatever God said, he will perform. And that is hope. Hope gives us inspiration. Our contract gives us inspiration. Hope gives us faith. For you heard Deacon uh, Elston say it this morning, faith, Hebrews 11 and 1, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So in other words, faith is me acting out what the contract says. Because I know what the contract says, what will happen in the contract is going to happen. So I'm going to act like it's going to happen because I already know it's in the contract that it's going to happen. That's what hope says. Yes, sir. That's all. Yes, sir. That, that hope gives me faith. And faith, amen, shows what I'm hoping for. And we need hope in times like these. We, we need to know that there's a light shining in the midst of darkness. And I want to encourage somebody in this season concerning the hope that we as believers have. So this morning, I want to speak briefly from a topic Sign, seal, and delivered. Right. Amen. <laughs> Signed, sealed, and delivered. I ask you, have you ever been in a dark place only to find out that what you thought couldn't get any worse only got darker? Yeah. I mean, you, you, you thought that all hope was lost until something worse happened and you found out the hope that you thought you lost got lost in a deeper pit. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. In high school, those concerns may be a little different from ours. Their, their concerns are, may not be as dark as ours are. They, they, in high school, it may be that uh, uh, you didn't have any clean clothes because you didn't wash over the weekend. And, right. and you got to put on something mismatch. And you all of a sudden wake up and you got a pimple on your face. And, and you, you already know that somebody going to talk about you. And now you got something else for them to talk about. Yeah. But for a high schooler, that may be a dark time. Yeah. Amen. But, 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 but for some of us adults, amen, uh, sometimes you're in a place where you got to rob Peter to pay Paul and then Peter come back and beat you over the head. Uh, I, I, I ain't always been financially responsible and still trying to learn right now. Sometimes you got to rob one place to take care of another place. Because at the end of the day, my light's going to be on and the water going to be on and, and we're going to be able to eat something. 
I might have to put something else off to the side, yeah. but we're going to have the necessities of life. Yeah. Uh, 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 maybe, amen, uh, uh, you, you're operating on a budget and all of a sudden you get hit with a four or $500 water bill because of a leak that was undetected. All right, all right, all right. And you call the water bill place and you done prayed and, and, and you said, God, I need favor. And you think they're going to tell you they're going to forgive it because it was a leak and they tell you you still got to pay that bill. Uh -huh. Yeah, dark times. Uh, uh, you might have lost a loved one this week on a Monday and you mess around and get the call on a Wednesday that another loved one is gone and then you thought that that was just the worst week ever. Do you get a call on Friday and somebody else has gone home? I'm talking about a dark place. Yes, yes, yes. Need some hope. Need some hope. Sometimes we're so down and we're so dusted and disgusted and we're so sad and we're so irritated or so depressed and we don't feel like anything could be worse than where we are until it gets worse than that. All right, all right. All right. I'm here to tell you that there's hope. Yeah, yeah. Jeremiah's situation was like that. Yeah. Jeremiah was the prisoner of a prisoner. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, the king uh, of Judah was a prisoner of the king of Babylon. Uh -huh. And Jeremiah was the prisoner of that king. Yeah, yeah. But he was in prison for doing what was right. We said it a couple of weeks ago, and Jeremiah rehearses why he's in this posi position at the beginning of chapter number 32. Yes. King, you threw me in jail because I told you what God said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You ever been in trouble for doing what's right? Lost friends because you did what was right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, you, you lost something because of doing what's right? Jeremiah was put in prison for telling the truth. Yeah. The king had tons of false prophets at his side yeah. to tell him, King God said everything going to be all right. Uh -huh. God said he about to turn that thing around for you. God about to drop a blessing in your lap. All you got to do is reach for it. And Jeremiah said, God said, repent yeah. and turn back to him. Yeah. They didn't repent. So Jeremiah said, God's offering you another out. Give yourselves up. That's what he says at the beginning of 32. Uh -huh. He says, God said, give yourself up and I'll let you live. Yeah. You'll be in prison, but I'm going to let you live. Yeah. And the king didn't want to hear that. Uh -huh. So he threw Jeremiah in the pit. You remember the story? And the Ethiopian said, you're going to kill him if you leave him down there. And he pulled him out, out of the pit. But now Jeremiah's still in prison. Uh -huh. Just for telling the truth. Right. Just for standing on the word of God. That's it just right. don't get no darker for Jeremiah in his life. Jeremiah is trying to get away from his calling. And I want us to understand the context of why Jeremiah says what he says. Jeremiah said, I want to give up, God. I'm tired of being beat. I'm tired of being prisoned for telling the truth. I'm done with this. But Jeremiah said, oh, it's a fire on the inside of me. And I can't keep this thing from burning. And it's burning me up. And every time I want to shut up, I got to tell somebody what does say of the Lord. You put your word in me and it's like fire shut up in my bone. Yeah, it was deeper than just it was deeper than just shout. It was deeper than just falling out. We got to understand what the Bible is and what it says and quit trying to change what the word says. Jeremiah wanted to quit. He wasn't happy about preaching. He wanted to quit. I'm trying to paint the picture. Jeremiah, he needed, he needed some hope. And see, we've been told this all our lives. That's why it offend us today. But, but, but the word, the truth, are not offend us. But Jeremiah said, I'm tired of preaching. But I can't stop. Because you put it in me. Yes, sir. But in Jeremiah's pit of depression, in his place of despair, God does a peculiar and odd thing that inspires hope. All right. And sometimes when God does a thing, yeah. it doesn't make sense to the natural. You never know that. But we must understand that we serve a supernatural yeah. God. Yeah. 
and when God does or says something supernaturally, the natural ain't gonna get it. It ain't supposed to get it. That's why he tells us in the New Testament, only those who have his spirit can understand and discern those things which are spiritual. But God does something to inspire hope that just don't make no sense. Tell Jeremiah to buy a piece of land. Now what is so peculiar about this? And what about this inspires hope? I want to give you a few things in what God does and what God tells Jeremiah to do that inspires hope, that ought to inspire hope in us today. The first thing is the most obvious thing, that God proved his word. He proved his word. Jeremiah 32 verse 6 says the word of the Lord came to me. And says your first cousin is going to come and offer you a piece of land. <laughs> and I want you to buy it. Yeah. You might say, well, what's so big about that? What's so big about it is it actually happened. Uh -huh. Just as God said it was going to happen. Yeah. Here comes first cousin. <laughs> what's up, cousin? <laughs> I got a piece of land. Yeah. <laughs> and I want you to buy it. I, I can't afford this thing. And if I can't, if I can't keep this, yeah. it's going to go to somebody else. Yeah. I want you to understand that the land was given to the people by God. Yeah. God gave Joshua the instruction, Deacon Eric said it this morning, on who gets the land. Right. What nation or what tribe gets what parcel of land. Yeah. And so the, the, the way it was is that they didn't sell the land to somebody outside the family to make money. Right. It was important to keep the land in the family because this was the inheritance of the Lord. And he says, I'm going to offer you this piece of land because you have the right yeah. to redeem it. Yeah. He said it. Yeah. I won't jump ahead of myself. That's how I take your time. But he says, you have the right, the right. to redeem it. Yeah. Just like Boaz yeah. and Ruth and Naomi's situation. They were in a place of despair so that Naomi said, don't call me Naomi no more. My name is Mara. Because I'm bitter. And Boaz just so happened to be close kin uh -huh. with Naomi's husband. And he had the right to redeem that property. That's right. That's right. And when Ruth married Boaz, the property stayed in the family. It's the same type of situation that's going on here. But it gives Jeremiah hope because what God said in his word proved to be true. Now, I ought to give us some hope today because everything God said, even the bad stuff, uh -huh. proves to be true. Yeah. Yeah. When, 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 when God told Israel about the countries that would, would take them over, uh -huh. it should have inspired hope to know that the prophets already said this was going to happen, and it's happened. Yeah. Yeah. Even when God pronounces judgment, if it happens, God proved his word. Yeah. Yeah. It just so happened to be that the word ain't all due. And gloom, but everything God promised is in the contract, and God will perform it if it hadn't already been done. It ought to give us some hope this morning to know that God has already proved His word. It ought to give us some hope this morning to know that God said through many prophets that He would send the Messiah, and He sent the Messiah. It ought to give us hope, praise God, that God, that, that, that what God said is true. And this thing gave Jeremiah hope. He, he said at verse number eight, at the end of verse number eight, All right. what God said happened. He All said, right. then I knew uh -huh. that this was the word of the Lord. Yeah. God Almighty. Yeah. I'll give you hope. Yeah. The second thing I want to pull out of here is the one thing that really, really, really gets my attention. All right. That even though Jeremiah was a prisoner of a prisoner, he still had the money to carry out the transaction. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> How do you do that? How can you be in prison and still got money? <laughs> in, 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 amen. In our prison system today, you can't make a profit in prison. The ones who own the prison making profit. The vendors who come to the prison make profit. But if you are a prisoner, you have what's called a commissary. Uh -huh. And somebody else has to put money on your account yeah. just to get a piece of bubble gum. Yeah. 
So Jeremiah is in prison, yeah. but he has the means to carry out a transaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great preacher. That ought to inspire hope this morning. Yeah. Uh, because that lets me know that even though he was in a dark place, all, right. all was not lost. All right. It lets me know that even though he was in a dark place, God still provided yeah. for his needs. That's right. Even though he was in a dark place, uh -huh. because he has money to make this transaction, lets me know that Jeremiah is protected by God's plan for his life. That's right. That's right. You might not have caught that. If God has a plan for you, mm -hmm. his plan will be carried out. And God will provide whatever is necessary in your life to carry out his will for your life. Yes, yes, your back may be against the wall, but all hope will never be lost. He said you might be cast down, but not destroyed. You might be confused, but you won't be in despair. You might suffer loss, but all is not ever going to be lost. Because all things, my Bible tells me, the contract tells me, work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. If you belong to the call, that's why I love every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Don't you leave out the word the. The call means you belong to a collective of people who God has a purpose for. Jeremiah still had money. I, I, I mean, he ain't working. He ain't got no job. Uh -huh. The job God gave him, he's in jail for doing it. <laughs> but he's got money. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, sir. He's in a poor place uh -huh. as a prisoner. Uh -huh. But he still has the right and the means uh -huh. to purchase yes. what belongs to him. Yes, yes sir. You, you getting it, you getting it, you getting it. I'm still trying not to jump ahead of myself. Uh, <laughs> the last thing that gives Jeremiah hope that ought to inspire us today yeah. is Jeremiah had evidence. Uh -huh. He had evidence of his purchase. Uh -huh. The Bible says that after he weighed out the amount of money that it took to buy this piece of land, this is so peculiar. So peculiar. Mm -hmm. yes, Jeremiah said, take one copy of the deed uh -huh. and sell it. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. But keep another copy open. Uh -huh. But put both copies in an earthen vessel. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and I want you to understand what happened with the open copy. See, the seal copy was the official record. Yes, sir. It, 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 anytime somebody had to go and, and, and make sure that was an official record on this piece of property, that was when the time where the seal had to be broken. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but for the time being, until the day of redemption, mm -hmm. until it's time to go back and take the land, to possess the land, Keep that copy sealed, but until then, there's an open copy for you to go and look at, and you'll see that on such and such a day, the prophet Jeremiah bought this field from his first cousin. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, he did. He had evidence. Yes, he did. He's in jail, right? Uh -huh. But even though he's in jail, anybody that come visit him in jail, Jeremiah can say, go over there and look on that shelf <laughs> and, and get that scroll right there. Uh -huh. You see what it say? Uh -huh. It say, I own that. Yeah. <laughs> I might not be there yet, but I own that. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Now let me jump where I want to go. I want us to understand why this thing ought to give us hope this morning. Praise God. Because first of all, we ought to be able to trust God's word. Because after all, ain't he God? Didn't he not speak the heavens and the earth into existence? Did he not form man out of the dust of the ground? And did he not breathe into his nostrils and man became a living soul? And did he not give it to man to transfer that same breath to his offspring? And now, praise God, everybody who's breathing is still breathing off the first breath that God gave to Adam. That's the 
the reason why when we give burial rights, we say now that the, 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 the body will return back to the dust from which it came, but the spirit, the pneuma, the wind, the breath of God will return back unto God who gave it. Hallelujah. I'm inspired because of that God who has a, the, who has given me life today. I'm alive and well because of him. And God has performed his word, praise God. He said in the old book, amen, and he said in the New Testament that he would pour out his spirit. And I know that God's word is true because I can feel his spirit alive and well in me today. He said, praise God, Jesus told me that when he went away, he was going to send the comfort of praise God. He told us in Acts chapter number two that we would be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I know that God's word is true because there's a change in me. I know that there's somebody else living in this vessel right now. Hallelujah. Because the things I used to do and not feel bad about it, I can't do no more. Hallelujah. Even if I think about it, I'm convicted because of the new life that lives within me. I'm inspired because of God's word. And he has proved his word to be true. Secondly, I'm inspired because even though I was a prisoner of the prisoner, because the Bible says that he who commits sin is the servant of sin. But guess what? Satan can't run free. He, he, he ain't got his own will that he can carry out and not have to answer to somebody because even God got Satan on a leash. I was a prisoner of a prisoner, but God still gave me something to get up out of the prison on. He still gave me promises to let me know that I wouldn't always be in prison. Try to unfold this a little bit more. I was in prison. That was no hope for me. But God sent another prisoner. <laughs> His name was Jesus. And, 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 and Jesus took on my form. And, 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 and he allowed them to, to, to arrest him and to crucify him. And, 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 and it looked like all hope was lost. But Jesus said, I'm going to lay down my life. But I got the power to take it back up again. Jesus says, they're going to tear this temple down. But in three days, I'm going to raise it up. And, 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 and Jesus, he, he, he did it because he has the right to redeem man. Nobody else could do it but Jesus. So even though he was in prison, even though he was on the cross, even though he went to Sheol, a.k.a. Ahel, the Bible says he led captivity captive because he had the right to purchase what belonged to him. So what did he do? I, I want to look at our situation like this. That I was on trial. You can look at this story and put yourself in it. And Satan was the key witness. And he knew everything that I had done. And, and, and not only was he the key witness, he was the teller and the prosecuting attorney. And it looked like, yes, sir, there was some trouble brewing. And we stood up in court and the accuser of the brethren, Satan said, that's Eugene LeVar Jacobs. I got a list of things that he has done. Can I go through the book? I, I, I remember on this day, I seen him do this. On this day, I seen him do that. On this day, I seen him do this. And Satan was sitting in the jury too. And the jury was sitting up there with his legs crossed. And said, yeah, 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 okay, I believe it, I know it. Uh, he, got a, he got a case right there. I, I can believe it. And the jury went back and it didn't take long to deliberate. The jury said he guilty. But then, I remember I had a defense attorney. <laughs> he pleaded my case. And even though the defense attorney could not overturn my guilty sentence, the defense attorney fought for me. The defense attorney was the judge. And the judge said, yeah, he guilty. But I'm going to overturn his sentence. Why? Because the judge put down his gavel. Yeah. He took off his gown. Yeah. And he said, I'm going to take his sentence for him. Yeah. I'm going to go to prison for him. Yeah. I'm going to redeem him. Yeah. I'm going to buy him off the market. Yeah. 
I'm going to pay the price for what he did. Hallelujah. My judge was my substitute. He went to jail for guilty of all. He went to jail for you and I. He went down into hell. But early on the third day, he got up and paid for what belongs to him. Hallelujah. I'm going to deal with this evidence All right. and we're going to go home. Right. Said so Jeremiah had hope because he had evidence. Uh -huh. Had two scrolls. Uh -huh. One record was sealed. Uh -huh. One record was open. Uh -huh. So that you would know uh -huh. instead of having to break the seal yes. that Jeremiah owned this piece of land. All right. And the only somebody who was able to break that seal right. was the judge. On the day Jeremiah was supposed to take his land back. Yeah, yeah. The Bible lets us know uh -huh. in Ephesians chapter 1, 13 and 14. All right. Whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, right. the gospel of your salvation. Right. And whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. All right. Which is the earnest of the down payment or it's the sealed record of our inheritance. Yeah until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Yes. Can I make that simple for us? Right. That lets me know that God or Jesus has purchased us yes. and there is a sealed record in heaven. Yes. And the only somebody who could break it, the Bible tells me in Revelation, is the lamb that was slain, yes. who also is the judge. Yes. My name, I, I pray to God, but I believe by faith that my name is in that book. My name is sealed up in heaven. And on the day of my redemption, he's going to open it up and everybody's going to be able to witness that my new name has been called. I want to hear him say, well done one day. I want to hear him call my name one day. I want to stand there in a white gown one day. If he give me a crown, I want to throw him at his feet and say, you go, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that seal lets me know that what he purchased belongs to him. But there's another record. Because can't nobody break that seal. But the judge. The lamb. Matter of fact, the strong angel was sad about that. Because he looked around heaven and said, who can break the seal? Who is worthy? That let me know. Can't nobody tell. I got a home in heaven based on that record. But he gave us another record. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 All right. but we have this treasure uh -huh. in earthen vessels uh -huh. that's the excellency of the power yeah. may be of God yeah. and not of us yeah. what that say to me that means there's a copy that God left for you uh -huh. to let you know that he bought yeah. Eugene LeVar Jacobs yeah. he put his Holy Spirit in this earthen yeah. vessel and you ought to be a, see, able to see a change in me yeah. even though you might not want to believe it because of what you know I did in the past there's a change in me that lets me know praise God we ought to be open copies of the seal record <laughs> hallelujah you ought to be an open copy when somebody want to know if Jesus purchased you they ought to be able to look at your seal I mean your, your record they ought to be able to look at your life they ought to be able to listen to your conversation they ought to be able to watch your example and know for themselves that you have been bought with a price which is the precious blood of Jesus Christ that ought to give us hope this morning that if you have his holy ghost, his holy presence uh -huh. living on the inside of you, that your name is signed in the Lamb's book of life, that you are sealed until the day of redemption and you're delivered from the bondage of hell. Hallelujah. I got hope because I'm signed, yes. sealed, yes. and delivered. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. That's all right. Maybe listening to me. Yes, sir. Your future is uncertain. Uh-huh. And you want to be signed. 
seal, All right. and deliver. Mm -hmm. I want to let you know the promise of God, Jesus, he said he got a home for you. All right. He told us about a piece of land. Uh -huh. I wanted to deal with it, but the Lord kept me where I was. Mm -hmm. John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. That's right. You believe in God, believe also in me. That's right. In my father's house, oh, many mansions. Yes. If it were not so, I would have told you. That's right. And he told him that I go to prepare a place uh -huh. for you. That's right. And if I go and prepare a place to you, that means I'm coming back That's right. to receive you unto my place, you. unto myself. Yes. That where I am. Yeah, yeah. Where he went to go prepare. Yeah, right. Then he may be also. Yeah. You know, sometimes we act like we jealous. We don't realize we fighting for we 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 fighting to go to the same place. Yeah. And, and the place that Jesus prepared for us got enough room for all of us. Yeah. Ain't got no reason to fight and argue and bicker. We all trying to get to the same place in this room. If it wasn't room, Jesus never would have said that he went to prepare for you. Jesus is God in the flesh. He's all-knowing. He's omniscient. There's no way in the world he couldn't have prepared a place for you. Yeah. He said, if it wasn't so, I wouldn't have said it. Jesus didn't waste time speaking idle words. Everything Jesus said had a purpose. Everything he said, everything came out of his mouth was nothing but pure, pure clean, cut, raw truth. That's right. That's right. He's got a place prepared for you. Yeah. Confess first. Mm -hmm. You know you're a sinner. Mm -hmm. But you believe in this message yeah. that God has prepared a place for you. Yeah. If you believe, uh -huh. thou will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Make them your Lord, not just your buddy. That's right. That's right. Not just your roll call, not just your battle. Mm -hmm. Make him your Lord. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. That's right. Believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead. Yes. Thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be saved. That be you, we want to invite you to know Christ. That you may be signed, sealed, and delivered. Mm -hmm. But you got to be sincere about it. Yeah. This ain't about going through the motions of repeating a chant and joining a church. You got to be sincere. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe here or outside or listening to me and you feel that you need to rededicate yourself. Yeah. We just want to pray for you. Yeah. You may need special prayer. Yeah. We want to pray for you. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what you need. Yeah. While I miss altar call and I miss being able to pour out for specifics, God already knows what you need. Yeah. Yeah. That's how awesome he is. So even in that, it's a blessing from COVID because I didn't have control over who got healed and who didn't get healed. And the fact that I know or I don't know what's going on with you doesn't keep God from performing his work That's right. That's right. in your life. That's right. And I want to encourage you right now, whatever it is, I don't have to know. God knows. And he is more than able to give you what you need. Praying for you right now, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your word this morning. Yeah. Thank you for your contract. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that your contract doesn't solely rest upon my ability to keep my end. Right. But, Father, your word is true regardless of my yeah. state. Yeah. Father God, I pray this morning that you've given us hope through your word. Yeah. I pray, Father God, that someone who needed to hear this message heard this message and that they'll apply it to heart. I pray for each and every one up under the sound of my voice that may be someone that doesn't know you, Lord. I pray that you use me to say something to draw someone to you. 
Father God, I pray for those who are in need right now. Whatever that need may be, I ask that you search every heart, everyone who's listening to me right now or whatever time it may be that they hear this weak voice. Father, I pray right now that, Lord, you'll turn their situation around. I pray that you will supply them with abundance. I pray, Father God, that you will fill every single need, Lord God. And I pray, Father God, that in all that you do, Lord God, in answer to this prayer, that somebody will know that it's you. It's not me praying, but it's you answering, Father God. That things are turned around for them. In the precious name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would keep these, your people, safe. Keep them in your care. Father God, as we carry on. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide on each one of us from this time and forevermore. Let every heart say, Amen. So there you have it. Listen, my brothers, my sisters, at your very darkest, we have hope because Christ has already made a peculiar transaction. Uh, He tells us... uh, uh, he tells Moses and and Peter recalls that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Peculiar people means a purchased people. We we have been purchased by God, and He has given us the evidence of His purchase through the power of His Holy Spirit and His transformation in our lives. That gives us the evidence of the parcel of land that he's given us or the inheritance that he has given us in heaven that he's promised. Make no mistakes. There is no mistaking when you read John chapter number 14 of what Jesus is talking about when he says in my father's house are many mansions because he specifically says I go to a place to prepare. Has anyone seen Jesus preparing a place here on earth? For, for for his beloved. No, he says, I go to prepare a place that this is the end of that, that where I am, there ye may be also. Where does the Bible says where he is after he ascended into heaven? It says that he's seated at the right hand of God. And if he's God in the flesh, uh, <laughs> he, he has his place right there at the throne in heaven and he has prepared a place for us. So no matter what we go through, even if we're in a in a in a in a sickness that may be debilitating, if we're dealing with something that is just just taking all of our strength, we still have the promises of God that he has made a place for us. Thank you for joining us this week. Hope to see you next week. God's blessings.